Some of the script today was written by Rowan. He did a great job for some of the dialogues. I also want to um, ask the choir to sing nice and loud without Mr. Crawley, who's on his way to the track meet. You guys will be able to carry it and lead. Without further ado, this is a prayer. Father John's going to mention that again. It's not just an act. It is the saving deeds of our Lord Jesus for us, that he did for us in Holy Week all those years ago. And may his grace come upon all of us, even right now, as we gather to pray and thank him, our Lord, for, for pouring out his grace on the cross for us. Father John. Thanks, Father Steve. So, yeah, we're about to have a break. We're about to go on a nice week and a half long break. But sometimes we forget about what this is really about. Why are we having these days off? And that's the purpose of this enactment today, is to help us to prepare for what we're about to enter into. All right, we're about to enter into the three holiest days of the liturgical year, the Triduum. This is when we remember Jesus' last supper, his suffering, and his death. So we are going to enact a living Stations of the Cross to help us to really be able to enter into well in these days. And like Father Steve said, this is a prayer. It's not just a play that we're watching. So I do want you to participate. And there's two ways that you can participate. One is... There's a response that's going to happen after each station of the cross. And your words are, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Let's try that together. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. One more time, nice and loud. Perfect. That's a response, like just like in Mass when we're saying the response. That's a way to pray. And then the other way is at the end of each station. The choir is going to lead us in a prayerful, meditative song. And it says, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes... And so listen for that. It's going to repeat every after every station. When you get the tune down, when you get the words down, join in the singing. Again, that's a way to pray and to help us to really enter into what we're witnessing here so that we can prepare for what we're about to celebrate tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. All right, these guys put in a lot of hard work, so I appreciate your attention and your focus and... Without any more, I give you our 2024 production of A Living Stations of the Cross. Every year during Holy Week, we stop and remember how the passion of our Lord unfolded. The Stations of the Cross are a beautiful way for us to remember Jesus' last hours here on earth and to recall the salvation he won for us on the cross. Let's take some time as a school community to walk the way of the cross or the stations of the cross with Christ in order to reflect on his passion. As we enter into it prayerfully and avoid distractions and focus on the narrative and reflections, it'll be quite a beautiful prayer. The narrator will give us a first-hand account of Christ's last hours. He is St. John, and he was there. Yes, I was there, and it was a long and difficult day for all of us, including myself. I'll help narrate the events as they unfold. We are now in the garden where after the Last Supper, Jesus led us to pray. Our Lord was praying in a garden right on the hilltop outside of the city of Jerusalem. The garden was called Gethsemane. It was filled with endless seas of olive trees. Our Lord wanted us to join him in prayer, but we were all asleep. In my sleep, however, I overheard his prayer. Father, my time has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all you gave him. I reveal your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours. O Holy Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Little did I know my late friend Judas was approaching with several soldiers hired by the temple priest. Judas betrayed our master for a meager 30 silver coins. Father, if you're willing, take this cup away from me. However, not my will, but yours be done only. Who are you looking for? We are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. I was immediately awoken by this quake in the ground. It also awoke the rest of us, including Peter, who saw the commotion and was quick to defend our Lord from his persecutors. Enough of this. Peter, shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? Caiaphas, the high priest, was intent on putting Jesus to death for claiming he was the Son of God. Caiaphas and the other priests were filled with rage and ready to present false witnesses and tell lies if necessary to get rid of Jesus, who they felt was a threat to the true Jewish religion. Our Lord remained silent despite the slander. You are a liar and a menace to religion and to society. Why are you silent? Do you have no answer to these testimonies before you? Are you the Messiah, the Anointed One, Son of the Most High? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Father, coming with the clouds of heaven. <laughs> Blasphemy! What more do you need to hear? He is worthy of death under the law of Moses. Take him to Pontius Pilate for sentencing by the Romans. The whole Sanhedrin condemned Jesus to death and now brought him over to be taken to Pontius Pilate, the governor of the region, and in no uncertain terms asked Pilate to crucify him. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. See him falsely accused by the religious leaders and the people. See him embarrassed in front of Pontius Pilate. Look at how he was not given a fair hearing. Do you see how Pilate takes the coward's way out? Look at the apathy of the crowd for our Lord. See how hard and fast Jesus is breathing. He is exhausted. He could stop these men if he wanted, because he is the Son of God. But then who would make up for our sins? So Jesus is going to let it happen, because he loves us. He wants to save us and win heaven for us. Still, in his humanity, this is terrible. He's anguished, and yes, he's afraid. So, Jesus of Nazareth, enemy of your own faith and, it says here, enemy of the state, claiming kingship of your own kingdom, what do you have to say for yourself? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my armies would be fighting for me. So, you are a king of a spiritual kingdom. The reason why I was born, the reason why I came into this world, is to testify to the truth. If you really want the truth, listen to me. <laughs> truth? I don't even know what that is anymore. Take him aside for a minute. Look. This man is just another religious fanatic. I'm going to have him whipped around and slapped around a bit. The embarrassment of it all should stop him from bothering you again.
I'm telling you, I've done enough to him. Look at the man. No, you haven't. This man is an insurrectionist. He stirs up people against the government and against Caesar himself. We have our law, and our law says that anyone who claims that he is God's son is committing a scandalous sin. He is a disgrace to our religion. Execute him, good governor. Is there anyone here who would speak up for Jesus? Every year around this time, I release one prisoner from jail. How about this year I release Jesus of Nazareth? No, release Barabbas. We want you to release Barabbas. Do I hear you correctly? You want Jesus of Nazareth crucified and the thief and murderer Barabbas set free? We, we want Barabbas. Your wish is granted, but I wash my hands free of this case. Jesus, you will go to the cross this day. Dear Jesus, please make me brave so I can do what is right even when it is hard to do. Don't let me be afraid to stand up for somebody when others are telling lies about that person. Help me to not put luxury, success, popularity, or my own opinions above what is right. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. Look at Jesus carrying his cross for us. See what a hard time he has getting the cross onto his shoulder. It is clumsy and heavy. His shoulders are already sore because they have whipped him extensively. There are thorns around his head too. Sometimes the cross hits these thorns. They go into Jesus' head like sharp nails. After presenting him to Pilate and having him scourged, Pilate gave the approval to have him crucified. They presented him a cross as his burden before his death. <laughs> you call yourself a king? Hail, king of the Jews. May your God save you from this torture. Save yourself, Messiah, if you are who you say you are. I was horrified by how they treated Jesus. I was in the crowd with Mary, our blessed mother, and I was hastily trying to keep up with our Lord. His face grimaced with pain and suffering, yet he bore it patiently. Dear Jesus, when something is hard for me to do, help me to remember how you took the cross without fussing about it. Help me to be good and kind to others even when it is not easy. Help me to control the anger in my life. Help me to take responsibility for both the good and the bad things that happened to me. Lord Jesus, when I get in situations where I have to carry around heavy burdens, please help me to remember that carrying the cross is part of being your disciple. Third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. He falls down hard on the pavement on his way to Calvary. See him trying to get up. He wants to keep carrying his cross. Everybody around him is yelling and poking at him. But Jesus does not get angry. He offers all the hurting to his heavenly Father for us because he loves us. Then he pulls himself to his feet and walks forward. Tell him now that you are grateful for all he endured for our salvation. Look at how Jesus is stumbling along, struggling just to stand. The cross is crushing his shoulder and the sharp stones in the road cut his bare feet. 
All around him, people are shouting and pushing, and the Roman soldiers, who have been ordered to crucify him, want him to hurry. Jesus tries as hard as he can to move faster, but he stumbles and falls. And then he fell. Get up! Get up, you pathetic Jew! How do you call yourself a king, yet cannot even bear a simple cross? My heart ached at the sight of him struggling. There came a wound inside of me, in my heart, but no one was more afflicted in the heart than our mother, Mary. Keep it moving, your majesty. <laughs> Dear Jesus, if something hurts me today, remind me to offer my hurt to God. Do not let me be mean to anybody who gets hurt, or who makes mistakes, or to anyone who is different from me. Help me to love others as you have loved us. station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. He feels so sad to have his mother see him all bruised and beaten. He knows she is filled with sorrow to see this happen to the Savior of the world. Even in her pain, the Blessed Mother is brave. She knows that he chose to carry the cross, and if that's what God planned for Jesus, she wants Jesus to do it. She, like her son, accepts God's will in all of this. Look at the Virgin Mary, Our Lady, reaching out to Jesus from the crowd. She is his mother. She comes close and her face is full of tears. Tears are on Jesus' cheeks too. You can tell how much they love each other. Look at Jesus and see a son who honors and respects his mother out of the great love he has for her. The soldiers try to make Mary go away, but she follows Jesus to the cross. Mary, after fighting through the crowd, finally saw him. She was devastated. Her heart was pierced by a sword as she saw her beloved son enduring the wounds of the world. Oh, my son, what they have done to you. Oh, woman, you know my time has come. Keep it moving. Dear Jesus, thank you for sharing your mother Mary with us to be our mother. Thank you, Holy Mary, for staying by my side in life's sufferings and pain. Jesus, give me courage when those I love have to undergo trials and tribulations, and help me to be like Mary, your mother, and accompany them in their sufferings. Help me to always do what is good and just, even when it's hard.
The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. See how Simon is trying to get hold of the cross and carry it for him. Simon is strong, but the cross is heavy. Yet, with God's help, all things are possible. Jesus never asks us to do something we cannot do. Sometimes, when you have these hard moments, it is Jesus asking you to carry the cross, as he asks Simon. Try to pray at those moments. Jesus is making you strong. Looking at this man named Simon of Cyrene, who stepped in to help Jesus carry the cross, remember he was grabbed into service by the Roman guards. At first, Simon probably didn't at first, Simon probably did not like having to help Jesus. He thought, why must I help this man? But as he assisted Christ, he realized who he was and that it was an honor to help him. May we too be proud to serve others and help carry people's crosses and burdens in life. Help us, O oh Lord, to be generous in service. He can barely even carry the cross. I don't think he's going to be able to make the march. Well, someone's going to have to carry that damn cross. Then, strangely, they pulled a man from the crowd to help him carry the cross. He was clearly a man from Cyrene in Libya. His name was Simon. You there, what is your name? Simon, I'm from Cyrene. Help this Jew with his cross. No, why should I carry the cross? I didn't commit the crimes that he committed. That's an order. Help this man. No, I cannot. Simon then looked at Christ in the pain that he was suffering. In his heart, Simon was moved with compassion. His expression changed. Okay, I'll do it. Simon would later become a preacher of the gospel to his community in Cyrene. Dear Jesus, Make me strong when I have to do something hard. When I don't like to do something, do not let me push it off on somebody else. Sometimes I don't really like to be singled out, but one look at Simon shows me the importance of stepping up and helping my brothers and sisters in need. Help me to be generous and to willingly and joyfully help others. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, oh, oh sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Are you there when they crucify my Lord? The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. Look at this woman named Veronica who is standing before Jesus. She is a poor Jewish woman who sees love in Christ's face. She thinks only of how she can help Christ and reaches out to wipe his bloodied face with her handkerchief. When she opens up her cloth afterwards, there is an image of Jesus' face on it. Look how Veronica shows compassion by wiping the bloodied face of Jesus as he walks the path to the cross. Think of how often I have failed to act charitably and compassionately at the moment when someone needed kindness. If men can be proud because Simon helped Jesus, females can be proud because Veronica helped Jesus too. It does not matter who we are or what we've done in the past. We always have new opportunities to do good. What is important to God is a pure heart that leads to acts of charity and compassion. If our hearts are good and kind, that is the best and most important thing. Lord, allow me to wipe your face. Blessed are you, O woman, for you are merciful. 
You will be shown mercy by my Father in heaven. The soldiers showed a little compassion for our Lord, but continued their ridicule. Keep moving! Dear Jesus, let me be thankful to people who help me when I need help. Help me to do kind things for other people, even if I don't get any reward. Jesus, you based your words and actions on charity and the greater good of others. Help me to be gracious and generous. The Seventh State. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Generous. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. Stoop down to where he has fallen in the street. He is out of breath and very tired. It would help if he could just lie there a minute. But he gets up and tries walking again. Look at how hard it is for Jesus to walk. He feels weak and shaky. He has had nothing to eat or drink, and he hurts all over. But the soldiers won't let him stop and rest. They keep pushing him to walk faster. He tries, but again he falls down in the dirty street, in the heavy wooden cross falls on top of him. When things get difficult in my life, help me to keep going. And when I fall, may I have the strength to get up and keep going. Our Lord fell weak, and then he fell again. Get up! Get up! Get up right now! Come on, get up. We're almost there. Dear Jesus, when I try to do something and mess it up, help me to start over as you did. If somebody falls down or gets hurt, let me feel for them and help them if I can. Station. Jesus meets the weeping woman. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. See him carrying the cross as he encounters these women of Jerusalem, who are standing at the corner of the street where Jesus is passing. When Jesus draws near, they fall to their knees, sobbing and weeping for him. They feel sorry for him and say loving words to him. Look in as Jesus talks to these women. He spends a moment to look on them lovingly and gives them a word of encouragement, even though he is in terrible agony. Remember, it is hard to be sensitive to others when you, yourself, are sick, tired, overwhelmed, or feeling bad. It takes much courage to be unselfish like that. See, Jesus did not think only of himself. He thinks about others and is kind to these ladies. Along the way, our Lord encountered the women of the city, who were grieving his coming demise at the hands of the Romans. Oh, Lord, what shall we do without you? Daughters of Jerusalem, 
Do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. Dear Jesus, show me how I can help others and make them happy. Teach me to share what I have with others and to not always try to keep my time and talents just for myself. Help me to think of others and what they are going through. When I feel lousy, help me not to simply focus on my own problems. Help me to still be sensitive to others. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. He is flat on the ground. It is very far hard for Jesus to move, but he gets to his knees and pushes himself up again. He knows he has to go on. Jesus does not like all this pain. He would like to be rid of it, but he can't stop now. Look at Jesus. He is walking slower and slower. He has been nearly beaten to death and has fallen twice already. The soldiers wish he would hurry. They are afraid that all the excited people watching Jesus and yelling at him may cause a riot. Jesus is packed in so close he can hardly breathe. He takes several more steps and then falls down in the dirty street for the third time. Jesus is determined to finish his salvific mission. He started this way across in obedience to the Father for our salvation, and he will finish it. Approaching the hill of Calvary, seeing the steepness of the hill, Jesus fell again. Come on, Lord, we are almost there. Dear Jesus, if I am slow and people rush me, help me not to get upset. Help me to be kind to everybody and treat others the way I would want to be treated. When I fail, please give me the strength and the courage to keep picking myself up and continuing. Help me to keep going when times are tough. Lord, I ask you for the gift of perseverance especially when it would be easier to quit than to continue. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Tenth Station. Jesus' clothes are taken away. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Look at Jesus. He is outside the city of Jerusalem now and staying on a hill called Calvary. The soldiers are going to crucify him here. Step up close to Jesus. His clothes are stripped off of him. He stands there, close to naked. In life, we may have to undergo stripping of the layers of pride, vanity, greed, jealousy, and lust in order to attain salvation. Look at Jesus. He is like a wrestler or boxer who takes off his ordinary clothes so he can fight better. Christ is getting ready for a battle. He is fighting against death and sin. He wants to win the fight. We are so grateful that Jesus wants to make it possible for all of us to have a life that lasts forever in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for doing whatever it takes for our salvation. 
We are on your side and want you to win. Finally, we had arrived at Calvary. Jesus and Simon dropped the cross on the ground. The Romans immediately stripped him of his clothes to cast lots. Hey, who wants to roll for his majesty's clothes? You've got to include us in it too. I was in front of the crowd, witnessing the humiliation of our Lord. Tears came down his face as he faced the pain of betrayal, humiliation, and torture. Dear Jesus, keep me strong in the battles I will have to fight to be good and true to you. Let me never forget that I can pray for your help at all times, especially at Holy Mass. Help me to strip myself of the layers of sin that I have built up in my life. God gave me courage, especially when it hurts as they are pulled off, and help me to make frequent use of the sacrament of confession to make that happen. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. He hurts all over. His head aches. He is thirsty. Now he is being nailed onto the cross. One soldier takes spikes and a hammer and rams nails through his hands and feet. Remember, too, that Jesus looks at the two Romans and at all the people who are responsible for his crucifixion. And he forgives them. He keeps forgiving. He keeps thinking of others, even when he is dying. Then they nailed him to the cross, one nail in his right hand. Then in his left hand. Then finally at his feet. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He says he forgives us. And that's a new one on me. If they can still speak, they usually curse us. Anyway, let's hoist them up. Come give me a hand here, will you? Our Lord was crucified, and each strike of the hammer onto the nail, each time our Blessed Mother's heart was pierced. O oh Messiah, if you are who you say you are, why don't you save yourself and save us while you're at it? You idiot! Do you not fear God? Do you not realize that He is Emmanuel, Son of the Most High? O oh Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. Amen. Amen. On this day, you will be with me in paradise. Mary, with her heart broken, approaches him at his feet. I also approached. I was horrified at the sight. O oh, mother, behold your son, John, my beloved disciple. Behold your mother. I held Mary in my arms as I comforted her grieving heart. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
What does that notice say by his feet? It says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. We told Pilate it was wrong, and that Caesar is our only king, but he wouldn't change it. So, you're the Messiah, are you? You don't look like him now, do you? Come on down, and we will believe in you. Yes, you claim to help others, but you aren't so good at helping yourself, are you? Rebuild the temple in three days? Don't make me laugh. He was deluded and thought he was the son of God. If that were true, why hasn't God saved him? Dear Jesus, when somebody hurts me, help me to be forgiving. Help me to be merciful as you are merciful. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. Look at Jesus hanging on the cross. He has been there for three hours. He hurts all over. He is so thirsty, but nobody brings any water. Jesus does not complain. He prays to his heavenly Father and tells him that he has finished what he had to be done. He bows his head and dies. Step up close to Jesus. He is dead on the cross. He suffered for us, and he accepted a gruesome death so that we all could have life. A soldier runs a spear into Jesus' side. Blood and water comes out, a sign that Jesus gave everything. Our Lord has met death, but thank God we know the end of the story. Jesus said repeatedly that he was the life of the world. He told everybody that. If they would wait three days after his death, he would rise again. When death approaches us, help us to be hopeful for eternal life. What he did first, we will do. Hours had gone by, and Jesus was still alive. He was suffering so immensely, but endured it patiently. The soldiers had begun to cast lots with his clothes. Can we share his clothes out now? You can have this. I'll take that. Here's a surprise. This is really good material, and it seems to have been woven in one piece. I wonder where a peasant gets something like this. Can I have it? No. We'll roll for it. Have you got your dice with you? Never without them. Highest wins. Six and three, nine. Ha, two fives, ten. This will fetch quite a lot when it's been washed. Right, job done. Now we just have to stand guard until this lot have died. I hope it doesn't take too long. It's hot out here. I... Thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Sounds of thunder and an earthquake erupted. The earth shook beneath our feet, and we all staggered. Truly, this man was the Son of God. Dear Jesus, no matter where I am, how long I live, or what happens to me, let me always be thankful that you died for me. At the hour of my death, I will look at you with gratitude and see love, hope, and mercy. The 13th state. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. All his enemies are gone now, so those who love him can come near and stay with his mother. Look at Jesus after his body has been taken down from the cross. 
and the blood and dirt washed away. Now he is lying on his mother's lap. She holds him lovingly. She keeps saying his name over and over. How she loves him. Her heart is broken, but she knows it's not game over. She remembers what he said, thinking about the third day. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea approached. They were both disciples of Christ, but in secret because of their fear of the Jews. Pilate has granted us permission to bury his body. Let's get him down. Yes, let's do that. O oh, my son, what have they done to you, my child? Our blessed mother, although her heart pierced once more at the sight of her son, took solace. She took solace that the devil is screaming in defeat in Gehenna, for our Lord has won over sin and ransom, eventually death itself. Dear Jesus, when somebody dies, help me to remember that you have given new life and that I will see that person again in heaven. Let me be like Mother Mary in my grief, full of hope. The 14th station. Jesus is put in the tomb. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Step up close to Jesus. Look at how Jesus' friends have put clean clothes on his body and sprinkled him with a sweet-smelling perfume. After they lay him inside, they leave the tomb and roll a giant stone in front of the doorway. It is so large that it takes several big men to roll it into place. Then they all go home. Step up close to Jesus. You cannot see Jesus because he is still inside the tomb. It is Saturday, the next day. Soldiers were sent to the tomb so that nobody would steal the body of Jesus. The soldiers sit by the tomb all day and night. Imagine that you also sit there and that you watch, pray, and remember the promise of the third day. I am a rich man. I have an empty tomb nearby. Let's give Rabbi a proper burial. They buried him in the tomb of Joseph until he rose on the third day from his death. We should remember that our Lord said in his conversation with Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and lived like us men. He then offers himself freely to pay the price of sin and death so that we may have eternal life. For we are not meant to be in the shadow of darkness forever since we are of God. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. He bore the punishment that makes us whole. By his wounds we were healed. Dear Jesus, help me to pray even when I cannot see you or when you don't seem very near to me. Teach me how I can wait when I cannot have what I want right away. Help me to be patient and allow all things to happen as you have them planned. Help me to be patient and allow all things to happen as you have them planned. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Let us pray the Our Father together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray the glory be together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, you experience untold sufferings in your passion. Grant that in our sufferings, we may share your spirit and strength. Lord Jesus, on your cross, you begged your Father to forgive those who crucified you. Help us to forgive and pray for those who may offend us. Father Steve, please come forward to give us a few words. Not only give him a round of applause, but Father John is going to introduce the, uh, those who acted today in the Living Stations of the Cross. And they did an excellent job. Absolutely. So these guys put in a lot of hard work over the past about three weeks. Father Steve was involved recording a lot of stuff. So when I call your name, come on up here, give a bow, and then we'll make a big, nice line up here so everybody can see you. We had our reader. Nice in front right there, Joseph Loyola. Joseph Loyola. And we had as our prayer, Hiram Garza praying for us. Let's go, Hiram. Nice job. Nice work. Nice work. And then our narrator who played the Apostle John was Bryce Collins. Nice job, Bryce. Good work. Good work. And we had playing Jesus himself was Rowan Pham, our Jesus this year. And then playing Judas, the apostle who betrayed Jesus, was Lawrence Gale. Gale, my fault, Gale, Lawrence Gale. And then the other apostles, we had a number of people for other apostles. We had Noah Krapel. We had Joshua Grano de Oro. And then playing Caiaphas, the high priest, was Wyatt Frazier. Nice job, Wyatt. Playing Pontius Pilate was DJ Miller. Playing the Apostle Peter was Ryan Schurman. Nice job, Ryan. And playing the three priests, or two priests, was Isaac Robles and Logan Anderson. Our four soldiers were play, played by Bryce Hanley, Carson Jeansom, Jonathan Arena, and Larry Thomas. Simon of Cyrene was played by Ra Raymond Howard. Raymond, get up there, man. Nice work, Raymond. And then our good thief was played by Austin Rudolph. And the bad thief was played by Jaden Lutz. Then we have two bystanders played by Braden Siebert and Harlem Thomas. They played both in the crowd and they were bystanders at the crucifixion. And then Joseph of Arimathea, who had the tomb, was played by Connor Nash.
And Nicodemus, one of the priests who actually came to recognize Christ, was played by Bryson Punch. We also had a lot of help from AOL. We reached out to see if some people would volunteer to jump over. It's not easy to come and act in front of the Shaw crowd, but we had a number of girls from AOL come over and playing. Mary was Caitlin Michelle. Playing Veronica was Bailey Guillory. And playing the woman with Veronica was Daya Salazar. And then our three women of Jerusalem was played by Eden Besnell, Malaya Arnold, and Ella Denny. And then we got guys in our audio tech booth up there right behind you. We have Chase Reyes and Evan Voizel. Evan edited all the audio that you heard today. Put that all together. And then in the background, inside the tomb, holding the stone the entire play was Lorenzo Sario. The whole time. And then jumping in on the recording while I was in New York at NLR, Father Steve. We had a little help. Some of the audio recording for the women's parts were done by Miss Courtney Bond. And of course, once again, we couldn't have put this on without the help of Mr. Jason Brown, getting all the set, putting us up together, helping us out. And then helping us to pray, to participate, to sing. Our keyboard was Tori Tran, and we got the Shaw Choir right here, all the guys. And I forgot, sorry, Ryan. Ryan Wynn, come on in. Played one of our apostles in the crowd, I apologize. And we had Trip. Trip Muller was in the back holding the, si the scene of the wall of Jerusalem. So this is your cast for our 2024 Living Stations of the Cross. Everybody take a bow. Okay, at this time we're going to ask the football team, come on, take it easy. Football team and coach, we're going to sing a song, three verses, as the cross goes back to the chapel. The cross weighs 800 pounds, and some of you had a chance to carry it. It's not very easy to carry the cross. So keep it prayerful, and think of Jesus carrying his cross as we put our giant... 800 pound cross back into the chapel for adoration tonight at 7 o'clock for those who want to come back. Were you there? Tremble, tremble, 
Laid him in the tomb. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it comes. Me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? The good night thought the cross of Christ is a revelation, the cross of Christ is an inspiration, the cross of Christ is an invitation. The cross of Christ is a revelation of how much God loves us. How much do you love me, Jesus? And he opens up his arms. I love you completely. And none of you is ever not worthy or blocked out by God's love. He wants each and every one of you to receive joy, peace, and salvation in this world and eternal life in the next. The cross of Christ shows you how much he's willing to shed his entire blood, all he has for love of you, and it's real. Jesus loves you very much. The cross of Christ is a revelation. The cross of Christ is an inspiration because Jesus walked that path of the cross and fell all those times and kept going for you. And it's an inspiration for you guys because some of you sometimes have challenges and you have to keep going. And you have to learn to tick your cross up like Jesus. So the cross of Christ is an inspiration for all of us in the challenges we have in life and the suffering that comes our way. And the cross of Christ is an invitation. Can I be more like you, Jesus, and sacrifice and love greater even when it's hard and even when I'm not appreciated or nobody seems to be looking or it actually seems unjust that I keep on giving and nobody cares. Yes, I can. It's an invitation for you to take up your cross too and lay it down your life for others. Especially when you become great men and have your own families and have to lay down your life for your wives and your children. Especially when somebody here is gonna become a priest and has to lay down their life for the church. It's gonna be a great inspiration to say, Jesus, I'm going to really try to form myself in the cross now that I'm young so that I'll be able to handle it when I'm old. Many of you would think that I'm pretty good, but the devil can mess you up at any moment, and you're not going to let that happen. During this week off, please take care of yourself and go to church with your families on Holy Thursday and Good Friday and on Easter Sunday. At this time, I'm also going to congratulate those who are receiving the sacraments. Miss Terry, you got my envelopes. Ryan, grab those envelopes. Stand on there and, and reach up to Miss Terry. The following students are going to be baptized, receive Holy Communion, or confirmed on Saturday night. When I call their name, they're to come forward. First up, Cutter McDaniel. Second up, no, they can come down. I, all right, whatever. Next up, Dylan Mitchell. Next up, Chase Suplin. Chase. We're proud of you guys. Saturday night, St. Rosalie's, 8 o'clock. Next up, Coming into the church, making his first communion and his confirmation, Larry Thomas. Next up, coming into the church, being baptized, receiving his confirmation, his communion, Gibson. 
Gibson. He's moving across. And also, coming into the church, receiving the sacraments, all of them, baptism, communion, confirmation, Hayden Hudson. And finally, receiving the first communion that he's wanted to receive since he was a kid and his confirmation, Raymond Howard. All of us need Christ, and Christ is powerful in the sacraments. And those of you who are not Catholic or your parents never baptized you or you never received First Communion, next year I want to see even more of you going through the process here at school of going to get ready to receive your sacraments. And all of you who want to receive your sacraments next year, we're going to work with you during the year, starting in the fall, when we, start, when we get back at the end of the summer, and we're going to have a great many more kids receiving their communion and their confirmation and their baptism. Once again, it was a beautiful prayer service. Very proud of all of you. Tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., we are gathering for the bus to do the nine churches walk. Uh, Friday, 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 7.30 a.m. Friday, Friday. Tomorrow, go to church for Holy Thursday, for Good Friday, and for Easter Sunday. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the love of Christ, whose blood was poured forth for your salvation, cleanse you and keep you pure and holy all the days of your life. May you all become the men God is calling you to be. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.